So we're going to be talking about the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system for the pupil in the context of systemic disease. So the pupil size is controlled by the two pieces of the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetics, which is like fight or flight, which means it dilates your pupil, and the parasympathetic system, which is rest and digest, which means you don't need your pupil, so you make it small. If you have damage in either of these systems, it'll cause anisocoria because there'll be a difference in the size of the pupil and it will be different in different lighting conditions. Because in the sympathetic nervous system, you've got a dilation problem. It'll be worse in the dark and it'll be the smaller pupil that's the problem. If it's a parasympathetic problem, it'll be worse in the light with a poor light reaction and that is a parasympathetic problem. If you have either a sympathetic or a parasympathetic problem in one or both eyes, you have to ask about the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system elsewhere in the body because it can be isolated. So where sympathetic lesion is going to be called a Horner syndrome, and you can watch that. And that's usually a structural lesion. And so we image from the hypothalamus all the way down to T2 in the chest. If it's a parasympathetic nervous system, if it's just the pupil, that's usually idiopathic, the adiastonic pupil but it could be from third nerve palsy or pharmacologic dilation or uh, the iris itself. And so when you have the Horner or the Addy syndrome, you have to ask about the other sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system findings in the rest of the body. And the ones that are most important are the GI system. So they might have diarrhea or constipation, the GU system, they might have sexual dysfunction or, uh, Genital urinary problems, urinary retention, incontinence, you got thermoregulatory problems, and that's the sweating. So they might have hyperhidrosis, too much sweating, or anhydrosis, too little sweating, and it can be segmental, just one piece of you, or it can be diffuse. And if it's just one side of your face or body, we call that the Harlequin syndrome. So it's just one half of your face or one half of your body hyperhidrosis on one side, anhydrosis or hypohidrosis on the other side. And the same thing can occur in your body, just half. And that's why it's called a Harlequin syndrome because it's like a Harlequin clown costume. And cardiac. And the cardiac can be too much, the tachycardia, or too little, bradycardia. So the things that we have to ask about before we say it's idiopathic and isolated, adistonic pupil, or idiopathic and idiopathic and isolated horners is make sure there's no systemic involvement. If you have decreased reflexes, we call that Addy's Holmes. If it's involving half your face or body, we call that Harlequin. And if it's a dysautonomia that's idiopathic that involves other sympathetic or parasympathetic systems, but especially thermal regulatory sweating, cardiac GIGU, that thing we call the loss. So every patient who has an anisocoria, make sure it's isolated and idiopathic image the Horner syndrome. You don't have to image the Addy's tonic pupil. You do have to think about syphilis serology and all these people because syphilis is the great mimic. And then make sure it's not the Harlequin or the Ross.